The Google Anti-Gravity IDE has two really powerful features to help you keep your project on track and they fix the biggest problem with AI coding, inconsistency. These are rules and workflows. An easy way to remember the difference is that rules make the AI consistent and workflows make it useful on demand. So the rules are these permanent guidelines that the agent always follows and workflows are on-demand prompts that you trigger when needed. So think of it as system instructions and macro buttons automatically every time or only when you type forward slash workflow name. For example, always add inline comments versus generate unit tests for this file. So it's always do this versus do this now. So you're actually programming behavior, which gives you a lot more control compared to just prompting. So it really is worth learning if you're trying to build anything in this tool. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. So how you find it is you go to the anti-gravity settings, you go over to customizations and manage, and then you've got rules here and workflows here, and you simply add from this screen here. So we've got description and the content. So with both rules and workflows, you have the option to create a global rule, which will apply to all of your projects or a workspace rule, which obviously is just for the project that you're working on. And these rules, you can move them across different projects. So if you do create a workspace rule or workflow and you want to apply it to something else, you just have to take the MD file and copy that to your other project. Now, if you do want to create a global rule, which again means that it's going to apply to every project. So for example, if you want to make sure that every time you implement an LLM into your thing that you're building, you want to make sure that it always uses Claude Code 4.5 Sonnet, for example. You need to specify that in your global agent so it always pulls from that information. So every time it writes a prompt, it's going to pull from that information. It's going to look at that file and make sure that it's doing things in line with that. I always use that example because if you are doing loads of things with LLMs, what you're going to find is that they're going to default to what they think is the most recent version of a model. So that is one of the rules I always put in. So if I'm telling you to do something with Gemini, this is the model that I'm referring to. The URL for the model, this is the model context window, all of those things, the endpoints or whatever it needs, I'm always going to put that in a global rules file so I don't have to keep correcting it. So that's where you would use global rules. You definitely wouldn't want to do that with something very specific to the project, like this is the color scheme, because then it's going to code everything in that color scheme. So be very selective about how you're choosing to set it as global or workspace. So that's one thing I will say is very easy to make that mistake. So for example, I'm going to just paste this one here, which is after adding a feature or function, test how well it works compared to the request, give it an accuracy score out of 100, triple check based on that score, what needs to be done to get it to 100. So that's very simple. I don't have to really break that down into markdown. I would only start to reorganize this file once I've got multiple rules that have different things going on for them and I want to make sure that everything's clear. This is the only rule and I'm going to save it. So I'll just hit command S and now this is in my global rules. So I'm going to get it to give this character a glow on the start screen and hopefully it follows my rules and gives it a score when it implements it and if it misses something it will analyze that score and try and get it to 100. So let me try that again. Let me get it to on the start screen add a music off button so just a volume icon that can be muted. Let's see if it follows the global rules this time. So this time it did it. It says I've added the music on and off button on the start screen. So let's refresh it and it's there and it works. Awesome. I will, of course, change how it looks because it looks a bit weird. But nonetheless, it works. And 
the rule has been applied. So we have an accuracy score and I didn't tell it to. I had words with it before to make sure everything was working. And it says on the start screen, add music on off button, just a volume icon that can be muted. And so there it says it's done it, it's implemented it and it's given it an accuracy score, which is what my rule told it to do. It says I verified the implementation against your requirement and my triple check protocol, functionality, persistence and visual feedback. So that's the global rules and it works. Again, if you just want to have one for your project, that very specific use case, then set it up as a workspace rule.